see Bigger than all my questions Bigger than anything God is bigger than any mountain That I can or cannot see Bigger than all the shadows That fall across my path God is bigger than any mountain That I can or cannot see Bigger than all my Bigger than anything God is bigger than any mountain That I can or cannot see Bigger than all my problems Bigger than all my fears God is bigger than any mountain That I can or cannot see Bigger than all my questions Bigger than anything God is bigger than anything mountain that I can or cannot see. Bigger than all the giants of fear and unbelief, there is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Bigger than all my hang-ups, bigger than anything, God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Bigger than all my problems, bigger than all my fears, God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Bigger than all my questions, bigger than anything, God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Bigger than all my problems, bigger than all my fears, God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Bigger than all my questions, bigger than anything, God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. My God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. The Bible says, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Let's join together in prayer. Father, we thank you tonight for this service. We've come and gathered in the mighty name of Jesus. And we're thankful tonight that Jesus is King. And God, we're thankful that your kingdom is within us. And Lord, we're thankful that Christ is crowned in our lives and in our hearts. And Lord, we just surrender to you tonight. May the will of God be done. May souls be saved. And Father, continue to revive the hearts of your people. We thank you, Lord, and we commit this service into your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let's remain standing as we worship the Lord. Let's sing our testimony song tonight. All day long, all day long, I've been with Jesus, and it has been a wonderful day. So I can testify tonight I've been with Jesus all day long Yes, all day long I've been with Jesus And it has been a wonderful day I have climbed up one step higher In that good old gospel
Just a reminder tonight to be faithful in tithes and offerings. We're thankful for the support that everyone has been giving to the church. Reminder, we have the, the cans on the way out, the milk cans. You can PayPal or come and see George through the week. I also want to thank those who have contributed to the Bible Fund. We have been giving Bibles out freely, and they are nice Bibles. They're thumb indexed, words of Christ in red, they're bigger print, and they're at the Welcome Center. And we have a, a fund there, and folks have been giving to that. So we, I want to thank you for your supporting this. I think that we need to get the Word of God out. And uh, we need to make it available for people, not trying to make money. We um, want to go to the Lord in prayer tonight. You know, the Bible says in 1 Chronicles twenty two nineteen. Now set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God. Tonight we want to pray for Jerry Binge. She's having some complications from her eye surgery. So let's pray for Jerry. Also, we want to pray for John Shepard. John's facing um, heart surgery tomorrow. And the prayer request that just came in, we want to pray for Don and Tammy Swartz's son, Aaron, he had a four-wheeler accident. So let's lift him up in prayer tonight. Do we have anyone spoken prayer requests you'd like to share? Any prayer needs? Yes, Jewel. Amen. That is for sure. Amen. Let's pray for the unsaved tonight. How many have unsaved on their heart? Let's stand as we go, Lord, in prayer tonight. I ask Julie to come and lead us in our prayer. Let's continue to pray that the revival spirit continue. Come on. Come to the altars tonight. Let's, let's seek the Lord together. May God have his way. Let's pray for Brother Jack for the preaching tonight. God will have his way again. Let's go to prayer. thankful God is faithful. I'm thankful we can trust him tonight. And there's nothing too small, nothing too big that God can't take care of. We serve a mighty God. So join with me as we look to the Lord in prayer. Our precious heavenly Father, Lord, we praise and thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. We thank you, Lord, that you love us. Lord, we thank you to be a child of God tonight. Lord, the peace and the joy that you give us, Lord. Lord, there's nothing in this world that compares to being a child of the Most High King. And so, Lord, tonight I just want to thank you for salvation. I thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord, how we have felt your presence already in this service. Lord, we've had a great week. And, Lord, we just rejoice in those that have come back to you and recommitted their lives to you. But, Lord, we need a fresh touch from you, for we know that, Lord, without you we're nothing. And nothing will be accomplished tonight, Lord, if you don't show up. So we just pray, Holy Spirit of God, Lord, that you would anoint the singing, Lord, that you would anoint the preacher, and, Lord, that the true preacher would come and preach through Brother Jack. We just pray, Lord, that you would have your way. We pray conviction upon the lost. We pray especially if there's someone here tonight that doesn't have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ that tonight would be the night that they give their heart and life to you. There's no other way that we can get to heaven but through Christ. And so, Lord, we just pray that, Lord, the truth would become forward and it would convict. Holy Spirit, may you do the convicting. May you be the convincer that only you can do. And, Lord, we just thank you and we praise you and we commit it into your hand. Lord, you promised that your word would not return into your void. So we're going to trust you tonight that you will bring forth fruit and that we would see souls saved and lives changed by the power of the gospel. And Lord, we do pray for our unsaved loved ones tonight. Lord, we lift them up to you and we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would go wherever they might be right now. Holy Spirit, that you would convict them and draw them to Christ. And Lord, we do pray for the fresh power of the Holy Spirit upon each one of us, that we could be bold witnesses for you, that we don't have the fear of man in our hearts anymore. But Lord, you've given us a not a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. And we thank you, Lord, that greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. So Lord, we just pray that we would each be witnesses for you. But Lord, we need have those upon our prayer list that need a touch from you tonight. We pray for Jerry Binge tonight. We pray, Lord, that you would touch her. And Lord, that you would bring healing to her eyes. We pray for Aaron tonight. We pray for healing to him through this accident. We just pray, Lord, that you would touch him. 
And Lord, we do pray for Johnny Shepherd as he's facing surgery in the morning. We pray, Lord, that you would go with him, be a shield around him, help him to come through the surgery for your glory and all praise and glory to you. Lord, again, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that you've blessed us with. And we just pray, Lord, have your way in through our service, we pray. And we just commit it into your hands. And we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, it's not often that uh, you live long enough to be able to celebrate your wife's 81st birthday. And that's what I'm doing tonight is celebrating her birthday. I got a couple of songs that I'm going to sing, and one of them is her most favorite song, but it's got a range on it that my sinus valley's killing me. And so I don't know if I'll get that total range, but uh, we'll trust the Lord. I was thinking about as Jesus was walking uh, to the road to Emmaus uh, after he was resurrected and Cleopas and then the other disciple was not mentioned and they said, did not our hearts burn within us? And that's what I pray for, a burning heart. And God's been good to Betty and I. We've been able to pastor a couple different churches and then senior pastor there at a town for a while. I've done, been able to do a lot of missions work in different countries, uh, in Peru and Costa Rica, Nicaragua, different places like that. And God has blessed us. And I want to give her a hand. I want you to give her a hand. She's 81 years old. Stand up, honey. And we invited all of our family here tonight. We have some that know the Lord and some that don't. So we just ask the Lord to have his way. I can get my band working. Don't ask me to explain for you how one could start again. Hardened hearts could soften like a child. How to reason out the mysteries of life How to face its problems with a smile Go ask the man who's found the way Through tangled roads back, back home to stay With all communications were destroyed Somehow her useless legs were made to jump for joy. Go ask the one whose burned out mind has been restored. I think you'll find the questions not important as before. Don't ask me if he's good. To prove to you why I know God is there, how I know that He would 
care for you. Don't ask me why someone so great would choose to walk with me. Trade my broken life for one that's new. Go ask the child who's got a dad to love away the hurt he had before this man called Jesus touched their lives. Go ask the one whose fears and fled, whose churning heart was quieted when someone whispered peace to all her Until the Savior came I, I don't pretend to be so wise I only know He touched my eyes And nothing else will ever be the same I don't pretend to be so wise song my band sometimes don't work right and I hit I got too many songs and I hit the wrong one I hope I got the right one if not I'll get the next one nope wrong song song. I don't know what's going on here. That's a good song, though. Try it one more time. This is it. This is the song. You've probably never heard this song before. It's my wife's favorite song, and it's got a couple of ranges. Only Jesus, only He brings redemption, full and free. There
Calvary's love will sail forever bright and shining strong and free like an ark of peace and safety on the sea of human through the hours of all the ages, those tired of sailing on their own finally rest inside the shadow cast by Calvary's love across their soul. Gift. Christ makes us worthy of the deep the sea can rise above Calvary's love Calvary's love can heal the spirit life has crushed and cast aside and redeemed till heaven's promise fills with joy once empty eyes so desire to tell the story of a love that loved enough to die burns away all other passions and fed by Calvary's love becomes a fire Calvary's love Priceless gift, Christ makes us worthy of the deepest sin can rise above Calvary's love. love has never faltered all its one there still remain souls still take eternal passage sins atone and heaven Sins atone and heaven came. Heavenly Father, we ask you, Lord, to descend upon this place. Fill our pastor, fill the speaker, Lord, with the Spirit. Lord, let the fire fall in this place. Let many be saved, many be healed and touched, Lord, by the power. Calvary's love. No love the world has ever known is anything like Calvary's love. Praise the Lord. Sins atone and heaven Calvary's love.
You know, the last service in revival is not the easiest to preach when you're the last to go. But Jesus said, the last shall be first. <laughs> he was speaking of humility. God never runs out of messages. You know, these last nine services have been refreshing, haven't they? Having nine different preachers, I can say this with all honesty. There's no jealousies, no envies, but all are just working together to build the kingdom of God. Because there's love one for another. You know God loves you. And there's no reason why any of us should be lost. So I want to invite you to open your heart tonight for the message. I know Brother Jack, he loves the Lord. He loves the Word. And so tonight, may God pour out through him, Jack Woodward. Let's welcome him tonight. So we're thankful to be here tonight, thankful that God's gave us an opportunity. First of all, I'm thankful for all of you that's here. Some of you haven't been around in a while, some I haven't seen in a while, and I thank God that we're allowed to worship again in, in this life. Uh, it's good to see some of you for the first time I've seen you in a while. Some of you I haven't seen in a long time, and I thank God for that. And I'm glad for all of that, but most of all, I'm glad that the Holy Spirit's here, because without Him, we wouldn't have any, any reason to be here. And I'm, I'm very thankful for what God's done in my life. I, I think back over the last three years of my life and how God has put people in my life, like Pastor, like many of the men that spoke before me, that, is, that has encouraged me and helped me to go on. That's what the brothers in Christ should do. We should come together in one mind and one accord with one purpose, and that is to be able to praise His name. And if we'll do that, then it'll draw people to, to Christ. And that's why we are here. Um, I've had this message, I told Pastor, I, I, had a, I really struggled a little bit with the Word uh, this time. I usually don't struggle that much. And I told him last week, I said, I had a dream that I'd got up here to preach and the Lord hadn't given me anything yet. <laughs> and that was scary. Uh, but God did give me a message. Thank God He gave it to me before I got up here. That's, it, it has happened before, trust me. And I still trust him. If he, if he did that, I still would trust him. He's always came through. I've never, I've never had a time that I've stood behind the pulpit that I had the purpose of preaching the word that God's spirit didn't come on the scene. Without him, we wouldn't have a preacher. But I thank him for what he's done. My message tonight, if the Lord, the Lord willing today, I'm going to try to, through the things that's happened to me over the, I've been a Christian for 40 years now. And uh, I know I don't look that old, but I am. Uh, I won't go there. I won't go there. But my dad's here. He's at, he'll be 89 this year. If that tells you anything, you know about how old I am. And I thank, I thank God for men that have went before us. You know, I, I've heard a lot of preaching over the years. Um, and I've, I've seen a lot of people uh, pick it up and lay it down over the years. And well, I tell you, people don't preach it like they do here much anymore. And I do thank God. I told Pastor before the church started, and I appreciate him and what he's meant to me. I wish I was as organized as he is, but I'm not. And those of you that know me know why. I'm kind of scatterbrained. And I only put a couple, I'm only going to put a couple verses up here, and you'll just have to follow along. But if you've got your Bibles tonight, I'm, we're going to be in the 8th chapter of the book of Romans. I'm going to be preaching out of the 5th chapter of the book of Romans some. Uh, I'll, I'll be quoting a couple other scriptures out of the book of Hebrews that the Lord wills. Uh, but tonight's message is really something that's really uh, probably the first time I've ever done it. So if you'll stand with me tonight, we're going to be in the 8th chapter of the book of Romans. I'm going to read two verses, so you don't have to stand long. Can I get an amen about that? <laughs> Everybody likes to sit. I don't know why. I like to get up. I'm, you're going to see here in a minute. In the 24th verse of the 8th chapter, this is what Paul's saying. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, what doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that which we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight, dear Heavenly Father, asking you to do the preaching. God, we pray, dear Heavenly Father, that not one thing would be done to quench the Holy Spirit. But God, that the Word of God would be manifested through your Spirit. 
And that it would go out and touch the hearts of the people here tonight. And that it might draw people closer to you. Those that are saved, God, help them to have more of a determination, Lord, to keep that hope alive in their heart. And God, those that have not yet surrendered to you tonight, I pray that that holy power, convicting power of God would fall on their heart and they could have the hope that I've had for 40 years. And I pray that they could see how that it has changed my life and how I can be an example to them, Lord, by the witness that I have had. And God, help us, Lord, to hold up strong that witness because as many have said this week, there are many people that are watching us. And God, we owe it to you. Lord, to hold the word and the truth firm in our lives. And God, I give you glory for that. Without you, Lord, we'd have no hope. And God, because of you, I have eternal hope. And I thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Title of the message tonight is Eternal Hope. Now, when I was growing up as a little boy, uh, we never had a lot of vacation time. I don't know about you uh, growing up. I never ate in a restaurant, I don't think, until I was like 17. We had, we, had, we had dinner around the table in the mornings. I had biscuit and gravy every morning. Boy, some of you men would like to have that nowadays, wouldn't you? Biscuit and gravy every morning, and, unless I got my treat, which was about once a month, and that was pancakes, homemade pancakes and homemade syrup. And I used to love that. Dad didn't like it much, but I loved it. But when I was growing up, the only, thing, only time that I ever got to really leave the house uh, because of the conditions that we lived in that time, Dad worked seven days a week with a quick turnaround every Sunday, and uh, he didn't have much time at home, but every now and then he'd get a weekend off. And I remember this one night came to my mind. I remember I slept upstairs, didn't have air conditioning. It was in the winter time. It started to snow. And Dad had told us if it didn't snow, we'd get to go to Kentucky. And I'm going to tell you something. When, I, when somebody said the word Kentucky to me, to go down to Grandma's Gravels, and that's what I called them, when I got to go there, there was a hope that, that come up alive in me to where I couldn't even sleep. I'd stay up, and I was waiting one night. I never will forget it. It was a full moon. I was probably about maybe 10 years old. And I looked out the window and it began to snow. And I started asking God, help it, Lord, to quit snowing because Dad won't take us if it snows. And we only got to go down for a couple days. But I'm saying in my heart, I had a hope of going to see someone. And you know what the definition of hope to me is? It's the expectation of something great. That's what hope is to me. And so when I was growing up, that was what was my hope. And many times... I don't know about you, but many times when I go on vacation, I go on vacation, it's almost more fun to hope about going than when I get there. Amen? I mean, there's a lot of times I'll sit back and I'll think, boy, I'm going to get to do this. I won't have to work. I'm going to go down and lay, in the, lay on the beach and put my feet in the sand. And I think about all that stuff, and when I get down there, it's chaos. It don't turn out nothing like I think it's going to. But boy, that week before, I had a hope of getting away from home. Anybody been there but me? <laughs> well, that hope was always great in my life. And growing up, I had a lot of things that I hoped for. I hoped one day to play professional ball. I was a pretty good baseball player when I was growing up. I was a pitcher. I was pretty fast. And I, I hoped my whole life that one day I would be able to be a major league player. That was my hope. And when I got older, I started playing basketball. I started doing some things outside of that that I hoped for. And those things are all good. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. But that was a physical hope that I hoped for that never did come true. But I'm going to tell you something. About 40 years ago, because mom and dad brought me up in the house of God, I was sitting back on the line, on the line of where I used to work. There's a couple of guys that I work with. I don't know if he remembers the old pickle line. I think he does. But I was on the back of the pickle line. Those of you who don't know what that is, I'll tell you later. But I was on the pickle line. I was working. And my uncle had just passed away. And God spoke to my heart for the first time. And I remember looking outside on that door. And that day, that day, there was a hope placed in my heart that I have never been able to explain with the words that I have coming out of my mouth. Now, I know a lot of times people try to understand the Word of God on their own. But I'm telling you today, without the Spirit of God, you cannot understand God. And I'm going to show you that. In the 8th chapter, in the first verse of the 8th chapter, it says, there, now, there is now for no condemnation that them that are in Christ, that walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. But I want, to, I want you to look at this second verse. I got it up here, and I want you to look at this second verse, because I've never seen it this way before. 
And I'm going, to, I'm going to read this to you. In the second verse it says, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Now what I'm saying by that is, when I got that hope that night, when I asked God into my heart for the first time, God placed a hope in me that the world just cannot give. And it's an eternal hope. It's a hope that goes beyond the time and substance of this life. It goes beyond what man can do for you. It goes beyond what anything has ever been able to do for you. But you cannot understand the Word of God unless the Holy Spirit is alive in your life. Now, I know people have questioned whether you can have the Holy Spirit. I've heard people preach different things over the years. But I'm telling you right now, you cannot know you're saved without the Holy Spirit. You have to have the Holy Spirit to know that you pass from death unto life. And you know what that Holy Spirit does? That Holy Spirit puts a love in your heart that man cannot give you. In 1 John, in 1 John chapter 4, it says, you cannot, I think it's in verse 8, it says, those that love God that know what, what love really is. Any man that does not love God cannot understand love because love is God. Love is of God. And when I got that love in my heart, there was placed an eternal hope in me that I have never, never been able to explain. But I'm telling you today, it's real. It's real. And you know something great about it is, the Spirit of God is so real in my life that I can understand what true love really is. The Bible says in 1 John 2, I uh, know, uh, 1 John chapter 2, I think it is, Verse 15, it says this. It says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, are not of the Father, but of the world. And the world passeth away, but those that love God abideth forever. And I'm saying to you, if you have your hope in the things of this world, then I'm telling you, you are faith, you're going to be sadly disappointed. Only the things of this world only last for a season, people. I'm telling you, whatever you hope for, if you ever attain that, whether it's a job, whether it's a spouse, whether it's a home, those things break. Those things disappoint. But Jesus will never disappoint you. You know, the things that have happened over our time the last couple of years uh, really amazed me. I, I never thought I'd ever see a time when the church itself would be afraid. But I'm telling you, we're living in a time when most of the church is afraid. And I'm going to tell you something. I don't have to fear anymore. You know why? Because i got a hope that goes beyond this world. I'm saying that we are saved by grace through faith that not of ourselves. It's a gift of God. We are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works that God before ordained that we should walk in them. He didn't say we had to walk in them. He said we should walk in them. In Hebrews chapter 2, the Bible says, Take the more earnest heed of the things you've heard, lest at any time you let them slip. For if the words spoken by the angels were steadfast, and every transgression received a just recompense or reward, how shall we escape so great a salvation that was first proclaimed by Jesus and then told to us by them that heard Him? Listen to me. We have forgotten the hope that lies within us. It is not of this world, people. This is not my home. My hope is not in the flesh. One day I'm going to die. The Bible says in Hebrews 9, 27, it's appointed unto man wants to die, and after this the judgment. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, in the last couple of verses of that chapter, it says the whole duty of man is to fear God and keep His commandments. For every work will be brought into judgment with every secret thing. With every secret thing. Whether it be good or whether it be evil. I'm telling you today, we need to get down on our knees and regain the hope that God put in us the day we got saved. Listen to me. We are more, listen, I'm going to get to this in a minute, but we're more than conquerors through Him that loved us. And I'm going to tell you something, we can do all things through Christ that loved us. In the fifth chapter, I'm, I, don't, I don't know if they're going to put it up here or not, but there's a verse in the fifth chapter that I'm going to really point out in the fifth verse of that fifth chapter. But in the first verse of that chapter, it says, Therefore, being justified by God, 
I have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom I also I have access by grace into this faith in which I now stand, and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but I glory in tribulation. I glory in tribulation because tribulation brings patience. Patience brings experience. And experience brings hope. And hope maketh not a shame because the love of God is given us by the Holy Spirit which was given unto us. For while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. For scarcely for a righteous man would one die. Pre-adventure a good man would even dare to die. But God commended His love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being justified by His blood, we are saved from wrath through Him. And He put a hope in my heart that has never went away. In 40 years' time, I, can, I can't tell you, I can't sit up here and tell you that I've always been on the mountaintop. I've been through some great trials. I'm talking great trials. Nothing maybe like... No, nothing like Job that we sing about, but I'm going to tell you something. I've been through some times when Satan has almost defeated me. When I felt like I couldn't go on one more day, but then the love of God reared its head in my life, and He reminded me that I'm a child of God, and I cannot be defeated. When I think about the last part of that 8th chapter of Romans, and I'm telling you something, it, the 8th chapter of Romans is my favorite. I'm telling you, it's my favorite chapter in the whole Bible. Because it talks about the hope. It talks about, in the 16th verse, it says, His Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we're the children of God. Boy, aren't you glad for that? We are the children of God, and we ought to be thankful for that. And we don't have to back down because of that. In fact, we ought to be the first ones on the firing line. Because we are more than conquerors. Who shall separate me from the love of God? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Amen. As it is written, we are killed all the day long. We are counted more. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. But nay, we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will separate me from that hope in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let me tell you something today, people. There's, there is so much in this Word of God that gives me peace. Listen to me. We're living in troubled times. And without the hope that I have in my heart, I'd have gave up a long time ago. But I'm going to tell you something. i got a hope in me that will go beyond this world. When I think about hope, I think about faith too. And you know sometimes people quit coming to the house of God when they get saved. They get a little bit of feel good. They get a little bit of hope. And they think they don't need anybody else anymore. Let me tell you something. The Bible says in Romans 10, 17, Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Listen. If you want your hope increased today that you that are saved, get in your word and start reading something about to increase your faith. Amen. Listen to me. God gives us a measure of faith. He tells us that in the third chapter, of the third verse of the twelfth chapter of Romans. He gives us that measure of faith that we all have. But I'm going to tell you something. If you want a real dose of hope, then increase your faith by reading God's word and obeying what it says. People ask me sometimes, they say, Jack, listen to me. I'm not up here telling you I read and study all the time because I don't. I wish I studied more. I wish I read more. But I'm, I'm a doer. I'm one of those guys that likes to work with his hands, Brian. I like to go out and work my hands. I have a hard time sitting down and reading. But when I do read, I start thinking about what that says. And I try to memorize as much as I can. Because one day, I ain't going to be able to read anymore. But I'm going to tell you something. It's hidden my heart. In that third verse, third chapter of Proverbs, he says, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them around your neck. Hide them in the depths of your heart that you might not sin against him. Amen. Then he tells us, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your paths. It'll be strength to your bones and marrow. Listen to me today. There's something about the Word of God that puts a hope in my heart that the world can't take away no matter what they do. 
They can come at me. Listen, I've had brothers and sisters in Christ hurt me. That's not going to separate me from God's love. I'm not going to let people make me weary and well-doing because i got a hope that goes beyond what people do to me. And I'm going to tell you something. I didn't miss a night of revival, and if it goes on another week, I won't miss then unless I have to go to the hospital. Because I'm going to tell you something. There's something about coming around and being God, be around God's people. In Hebrews 10, 24 and 25, it says that we should gather ourselves together so much more as we see the end approaching. Why? Why do we do that? To increase our faith? Increase our faith? You know why we need our faith increased? Because we're facing some tough times. And we have to believe in what we do. I'm going to get back to my scripture here in a minute. I'm going to tell you something. In Jeremiah 29, 11, I'm gonna, I, this is, I know a lot of people know this verse. But I believe this with all my heart. He said, he said I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Thoughts of peace and not evil that you might have an expected end. Listen, God's got an expected end for you. You don't have to do it, but He's got an expected end for you. God's got an expect. And you know something? When I think about Jeremiah, when I think about all that he went through, and I think about how much, how hard it was for him to keep the hope alive in his own heart because nobody else was doing anything, I'm going to tell you what come out of Jeremiah's preaching. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were in Babylon, but they never forgot the words. They heard Jeremiah preach. And Jeremiah probably thought he wasn't doing any good at all. But I'm going to tell you something. The Bible says in the 31st chapter that he said he would bring the children back to their coasts. Let me tell you something today, people. We need to quit being afraid of everything that's going around. And we need to start putting our trust in God. He's the author and finisher of our faith. When I think about faith, I think about 11.1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, and by this the elders gain a good report. And in the sixth verse he says, It's impossible to please God without faith, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder to those that seek him. But he's a rewarder to me, Kevin. He's been a rock in a weary land. He's been the joy of my salvation. He's been everything to me, and no matter what the world throws at me, I am more than a conqueror through Him that loved me. <sighs> Listen to me, people. I know we get weary. But when I got saved, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it says that I'm a new creature in Christ. Old things pass away, and behold, all things become new. And I'm going to tell you something, the day I got saved, this is no lie, this day I got saved, I wanted to go out and tell the whole world what God had done for me. And I didn't have a clue what He did do, really, other than I wasn't the same creature I was the day before. He put a hope in my heart. And because of that, the world can throw the bank at me. And it doesn't make a difference. You know why? I'm going to make heaven one day, people. Matthew 24, 13 says, He that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. And I'm going to tell you something, I'm going to keep enduring. Because i got a hope in my heart that tells me that the Word of God is true. That the Word of God is right. That the Word of God is real. That the Word of God and the people of God. God has a people and I'm a part of that people. And because of that, no matter what the world does to me, I don't care. I'm going to tell you something, you can put your hope in the world if you want to. But you, you ain't watched the news lately, have you? You can put your hope in the things of this world if you want to. But I'm going to tell you something. Those hopes will be dashed pretty soon. But I put my hope in Christ Jesus, which is my conqueror. He is my all in all. And I'm going to tell you something. Nothing's going to separate me from that. Nothing's going to separate me from that. And it takes the Holy Spirit to reveal that to you. You want to know about the Word of God? You want to know what it means? You really want to understand what it is? Then you have to yield yourself to Him first. I know when people get under... Listen, you don't see conviction like you used to, do you, Kevin? I don't see conviction like I used to. I used to see people grab the seats and be so, so glued to that that they, they were just crying and weeping, didn't know what to do. Let me tell you something. If the Lord comes knocking at your heart tonight, you better put your hope in Him because the hope in this world is not going to fulfill what you need. I love Him tonight. Listen. I believe with all my heart that if you'll take the time to increase your faith today, 
even in the weary times that we live in today. I believe if you'll take that faith and grab a hold of that faith, He'll put a hope in your heart that the world can't take away. But if you keep staying out of church and you keep being disobedient to God and you keep being lazy and not doing the thing God wants you to do, you're never going to... Listen, somebody asked me the other day, they said, uh, they said Jack, you think, uh, you think you get the Holy Spirit when you get saved? And I said, absolutely. He said, well, what did, what did it mean then when he said he fills you with the Holy Spirit? Let me tell you something. The disciples, you know why they went to their death? I'm going to tell you something. They wouldn't have done that before the Holy Spirit come. But when the Holy Spirit come, they were willing to die for what they had. And if you got the Holy Spirit, you'd be willing to die too. You might have your hope in a job. Maybe, you, maybe if some of you, I know Julie said she's got an interview this week. She might, she might have, let me tell you something. I can guarantee you one thing about Julie. She ain't worried about that job. She might need the job. You know, I don't know if she needs it. Some of you might be looking for a job today. You might be looking for a spouse today. You might be looking for a home today. You put your stuff in that and it's going to, listen, your house is going to break. My house breaks every day, it seems like, anymore. I don't have any hope that it ain't going to quit breaking either. But I'm going to tell you something. i got a home that's never going to break. And you can't talk me out of that. Can't talk me out of that. You can say anything you want to. You can, you can curse me. You can yell at me. You can say I ain't no good. But I'm going to tell you something. i got a Heavenly Father that said I was worth dying for. I'm going to tell you something today, people. I'm not a long-winded preacher. I don't have, I don't know a whole lot. I, I'm, I'm not going to try to sit up here and tell you I know a lot of, about God. But one thing I do know, one thing I do know, I know that if you're going to have any hope whatsoever, it's going to have to be anchored in, in Him. And I'm going to tell you something. The hardest part about serving God is making your mind up to do it. I remember what it was like. Kevin, even though the Lord spoke to me that day back on the line, I went to church the next night, and I do believe. Now listen, the Bible says in Romans 10, 8, 9, and 10, it said you have to believe with all your heart, confess with your lips that He's the Christ. If you get saved, you won't have no trouble telling somebody. Now, I believe that. And I don't believe I was saved till the Wednesday night. That's the reason I stand up on Wednesday. It was a Tuesday night at work when I, got, when I gave my heart to the Lord, but Wednesday night's when I confessed it, brother. And I believe that sealed the deal. And I know it's the hardest thing in the world to give up what you're going through or what you're doing. You think, you think the things of this world is going to satisfy you, and they do for a little bit. But I'm going to tell you something. You're either serving one, one of the other masters. It's impossible to serve both. But I'm going to tell you something. If you'll choose Jesus. Now listen to me. I'm getting real serious. I'm just going to quit yelling at you. I know you're probably... I'm spitting and everything else. And everybody said, I don't want to sit. Tony said, I'm not sitting in the front row. You spit on me. I'm not yelling at you. I'm going to get real serious with you here right now, okay? I want you to listen to me real close. If you don't have Jesus in your heart, you have no hope. When I read the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews about the saints that went on before us, Enoch and Moses and Noah and all the ones that had faith and how God helped them, when I read about that and I get down to the, the, the last part of the 11th chapter and talk about those that were sown asunder, I feel like that sometimes. I feel like I've been sown asunder sometimes. But nothing like they were. But in that next verse, in that 12th chapter of the book of Hebrews, it says, Wherefore we are also compassed about by so great a cloud of witnesses. Amen. People that have went on before us, Kevin, preached the gospel, laid it down. We are compassed about by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and every sin that so easily besets us and run the race with patience set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before him went all the way to the cross, despising the shame. He's now set down at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for me. For me. And for you. How can you pass that up? How can you... How can we escape if we, if we neglect so great a salvation that has been preached this week? Somebody, I, don't, I can't remember who it was, was preaching this week. I think it was Brian was talking about the man that was looking up out of hell. One, one of them preached, I'm not sure, I shouldn't even bring up names. But they were talking about the man that looked up from out of hell. It might have been Charlie, I can't remember. But I'm saying this, that if you don't accept Christ now... Listen, my brother-in-law just passed away from COVID. Good Christian. Known him for a long time. Done everything. You know, he wasn't perfect either. He was like me. 
One day he was well, next day he wasn't. He went on a vent, 37 days later he passed. As far as I know, he never had another opportunity. Let me tell you something. The Bible doesn't say today is the day of salvation for nothing. The reason he says that is because this may be your last chance. I'm going to tell this story and then I'm going to close. I was a young man. I was young. You guys can come and get ready to get a song. When I was a young man, listen to me. When I was a young man, I remember my pastor that I had for 40 years. He was preaching from the pulpit. And there was a gentleman that came in and said about where Paul's sitting at our church. And he preached a message. And man, I'm telling you, Jack, he couldn't help it. He went down to the guy and he looked up at him. He said to him, he walked up to him and said, won't you come up and pray? He looked up at him. He said, God doesn't speak to me anymore. That crushes me. But that's reality, people. God doesn't promise you that He'll always speak to you, but if He doesn't draw you, you can't be saved. He has to draw you. There was another guy that sat there about the same place not too long after that. He came in that church. Jack preached the message. He held on to the pews like I was talking about, crying, holding on to him. Several people went up to him and said, you, you want to go, go up and pray with me? We'll go up and pray with you. Because listen, I care about you. You may not think I care about you, but I love you. I want you to be saved. Amen. You know why? Because the Spirit lives here and He wants you to be saved. Amen. This man looked up and said, I don't think I can live for Jesus. He left that night. Got on his motorcycle, went down the road about two miles and was killed. He'd had to live for him five minutes. Five minutes. But he gave up eternity for that five minutes. I say to you today, this may be your last opportunity. But I'm going to tell you something, you won't regret it. You won't regret serving Jesus. And I'm going to tell you something, people say you can go back if you want. Listen, you won't want to go back when you got what I got. You may get discouraged. People may let you down. You may feel bad about everything that's going on around your life. But I'm going to tell you something. There is hope in Him. Amen. And He can put a hope in your heart that the world can't give you. I love Him today. Listen to me, people. I love Him. I owe Him everything. Why do you think the pastor studies and prays all the time? You know why he does that? Because he loves you the way Christ loves you. We all know John 3.16, but boy, John 3.17 is what it, the really with me hits it. He came not in the world to condemn you. You was already condemned. He came to seek and to save you. He was willing to give His life for you and put that hope in you of, go, of eternal life that one day you can have that too. So I want you to stand across the building today and as they sing a verse of song today, listen to me. Won't you come? Pastor wants to pray with you. I want to pray with you. These other brothers want to pray with you. I want you to have what I have before you leave. I don't want to see you leave this building without Him. Because I'm going to tell you something. If you don't have Him and you don't got a good dose of Him, you ain't going to make it, people. You need to be filled with the Spirit as much as you can be. And if you don't have that Spirit today and you don't feel like I'm talking about today, then come up and make it right. Confess your sins before Him. He'll be faithful and just to forgive you of those sins and to cleanse you from any unrighteousness that you have. You just got to come with a humble heart and a contact spirit and said, I want what that guy's got. I want what that guy's got. And I told Randy I wanted him to sing this song today. And I, this, is my, this is what I believe today with all my heart. All my hope is in Jesus. I hope yours is too. I've been helped by the Savior. Think about it now. I felt fire. From above I've been down to the river I ain't the same I'm a prodigal return All my hope is in Jesus Day is gone. All my sins are forgiven, and I've been washed.
by the blood I'm no stranger to the prison Come on, come on I've worn shackles, I've worn chains I've been freed, I've been forgiven. Yes, I've been forgiven. I'm not going yes, back. Not going. I'll never be the same. Cause all my hope is in Jesus. Thank God that yesterday is gone. See, I've been washed by the blood. There's a kind of thing that just breaks a man. It'll break him down to his knees. Lord, I've been broken more than a time or two. Oh, but you picked me up. Oh, you showed me what it means to be a man. Don't give in to the devil. Come on and get saved. And all my hope is in Jesus. Thank God that yesterday is gone. All my sins are forgiven. I've been washed by the blood. There's a verse in, in 1 John, I think it's 1 John chapter 2. Right after he talks about coming and forgiving your sins in verse 9, he says, My little children, I write these things unto you that you sin not. But if any man sin, he can have a he can have a recompense of his evils if he'll just come. Because we serve Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He's willing to forgive you today. Listen to me today. Listen to me today. You put him off one more day, this could be your last day. And it would break my heart if I heard that. Especially when you had the opportunity to be saved. How many people you think are in hell today looking up saying, I wish I had one more chance. I wish I was standing where you're standing. Let me, let me beg you one more time. I'm going to beg I'm, I'm done after this. But listen, if you really want a dose of hope, trust in Jesus, would you? Why he sings this verse. You see, I'm no stranger to that prison. Yes, I've worn shackles. I've worn chains. See, I've been freed, I've been forgiven. I'm not going back, no, I'll never be the same. Cause all my hope is in Jesus. Thank God that yesterday is gone. You see, I've been washed by the blood. Sing it with us one time. Oh, my hope is in Jesus. Thank God my yesterday is gone. Oh, my sins are forgiven and I've been washed by the blood yes all my sins are forgiven and I've been washed by the blood
How many, your hope is in Jesus tonight? It can be. You don't have to leave here without having that assurance. You can have that blessed assurance tonight. He loves you. He'll forgive you. No matter what you've done, he'll, his arms are open for you tonight. You know, the devil's a liar. He's lied to so many. But the truth is found in Jesus Christ. He's the anchor that will hold you when nothing else will in life. Make sure you're building your life upon the firm foundation. Amen. Well, we thank God for the message tonight. Amen. Thank God for the messenger. <clears throat> Some of you have gotten used to coming to church every night. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we could. We got enough preachers around here. I'm, I'm sure we could go again. But I am preached in two weeks, and it's time for me to cut loose. <laughs> I can't stand it. But I thank God for the people of God. No better family to be part of than God's family. You won't find this love anywhere else. So we're glad that you've been here tonight. If you don't have a home church, we invite you to come back. Amen. Make this your regular place. I guarantee you, you will be loved. Pastor, I got one more song that I've been wanting to do all week. Do it, brother. Do you want to? We need some spirit-filled preachers. <laughs> Amen. To teach us right from wrong. Need some good gospel seekers. One who pray all night long. We need some good gospel singing. To help us go another mile. The church will triumph and, oh Lord, we'll all go home in a little while. And it'll be worth it after all, child. It'll be worth it after all. After all of these trials, we'll Jesus call It'll be worth it after all child It'll be worth it after all After all of this climbing It'll be worth it after all Well when you're down in that valley Pray is all you can do For the Lord to send deliverance To strengthen you Well, when you're up on that mountain You see me struggling alone Lift my name up to Jesus. Let's help each other make it home. And it'll be worth it after all, child. It'll be worth it after all. After all of these trials. And after all time, it'll be worth it after all. After all of this climbing, oh Lord, it'll be worth it after all. It'll be worth it after all time. Yes, it'll be worth it. But after all, yes it will. After all of these trials, we'll hear Jesus call. It'll be worth it after all, child. 
It'll be worth it after all. After all of this climbing, oh Lord, it'll be worth it after all. Yes, after all of this climbing, oh Lord, it'll be worth it after all. Glory and the church Hallelujah. and the church said hey, folks glory. keep looking up Jesus is coming back yes, he is. and until we meet again and if I don't see you I'm going to see you until our next appointed time or until the Lord returns folks keep living yes. every day for the glory of God and for the souls of others. Let's close in prayer. Brother Jack, Sister Vicky, if you'd make your way out so folks can greet you. May the Lord bless you, watch over you, protect you. And let's look forward to service on Wednesday night. Brother Brian, if you come and dismiss us in prayer. Lord willing, you're expected to be here Wednesday at 7 o'clock. All right, this is where it's at. We expect you to be here. You're missed when you're not here, whether you believe it or not. Amen. You are missed. Well, let's be dismissed in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank You so much for what You have allowed us to feel this week, to accomplish this week, and how You have increased our faith this week. I thank You for how I've grown this week. And I know I can speak for most everyone that was here, that they grew they grew closer to You. They grew stronger. They've, they've rekindled a, a burden for their, their lost children or their lost loved ones. So God, I pray that You would kindle that fire that You've put down deep inside us. That You would bring us back Wednesday, Lord willing, that we could worship again together. Get us home safe. Bring us back at the next appointed time, I pray. In Jesus' name, Amen.